What's up, everybody? Big Herc 916, getting down fresh out interviews. I have somebody here today, very special, DJ Verrett. Mm. His story is incredible, man. This guy went through the prison system and came out just an inspiration to other people out there who have, you know, overcame adversity and had challenges in their life. Um, I'm going to let him tell his story. Make sure you hit that sub button. Make sure you like it and um, sit back for uh, something very uh, in detailed and interesting. Um, mm. DJ, so, tell the people a little bit, man, about like your background, man, where you from and how you grew up. Yeah, I grew up in Harbor City. Um, you know, mom had three kids. I'm the oldest. You know, I, I got two sisters. Grew up, grew up good. Um, you know, had everything that I wanted, but then turned a certain age. My perception of life changed, so I got into the hustle, right? Um, my father figures were my big homeboys. They groomed me. Make a long story short, I went to prison, did um, 17 off of 20, um, went to a whole bunch of craziness in my prison time. Um, as we talked about before, um, here I go, I'm 36 years old, getting ready to touch these 10 toes down. I actually want to max out on the 20, but um, my mom was like, baby we need you home you know so um before we get into the, the to you about to touch down you know leading up to prison can we talk about some of your other videos what led you going to prison but while you were in prison at some point did you have an epiphany or was there something that like mm. changed your, your your perception of life and how you you know wanted to move forward yeah, it was, brother. Um, it was um, July 2nd, 2005. I've been in prison 15 and a half years. I'm in the day room in my spot. Um, I was, um, I never shot heroin, but I like smoking heroin. And I'm knotted out in the day room right in front of the TV. Had a gallon of wine. And um, as soon as that H started going through my body, I knotted out. And um, I was a 200 pound scared little boy, basically, you know, like a wounded, a mistreated pit bull. You dig what I'm saying? And um, and I'm in my nod, um, Herc, and um, I'm in a room full of killers, you know, and they laughing. You know, I'm the big homie now, you know, from the little homie to the big homie now. And they're laughing, they're saying, Ghost always been like that. And they laughing, like, yeah, that nigga always been, he spoke that heroin and just, nod the fuck out you know and i'm hearing it yeah he's always been like that so i'm in my nod i can hear it but i can't respond mm. and i heard that these killers dog these motherfucking killers is pointing at me and they're laughing they're all around me he's always been like that that resonated through my entire being. You dig what I'm saying? I've always been like that. So um, I woke up back in my cell. It was 4.32 a.m. July the 3rd. And um, I said, I can't go home like this. I said, help me. You know, because God, concept of God, was instilled in me as a child. <clears throat> so I said, if you real, help me. I'm about to get out and I don't know what to do. And um, so, you know, I threw the beanie on, threw, you know, threw the locs on, you know, teed up, you know, you know, with the big band jackets mm -hmm. they give you. And um, I went outside, I, I rolled up a cigarette, and I'm sitting there smoking. And I saw this seven. I saw this lady walking across the yard with a pink box in her hand. She was walking with the counselor. Her name is Liz, and um, she was seventy years young. She walked across the yard, dog. I'm sitting there looking. I'm thinking some kind of religious person or something. You dig what I'm saying? And um, I say, fuck it. I go say a few hallelujahs, a couple of amens, because I ain't had a donut in damn near seventeen years. You dig what I'm saying? So I followed her upstairs. I said, what's this? She told me what it was. I'm like, I threw the deuces. I'm like, I, I, don't, I don't do that. And she told her life story that she never shot dope, but she smoked heroin. And this is how her life has been. And once she got clean, this is how her life changed. 
And I believed her. I believed her hurt. From that day, July 3rd of 2005, even in prison, I stopped getting high. I told the homies, I'm done. I'm done. I had a half an ounce and $50 papers and plastic behind my photo album pictures because it's heroin, it's currency everywhere mm -hmm. I go. So I said, told the homies, I said, I'm done, here go the knives. And like, it's time I finally got to go. So my homeboy, he from, he from out here too, right? I said, check this out, I got something for you. He was like, what is it, ghost? I start opening the pictures up and say, here, I don't want this no more. I don't want this no more. I don't want this no more. He said, what you doing? I said, I'm giving them, I'm giving them all this heroin. I don't want it no more. So one of the lieutenants, he was a CO when I first fell at Lompoc. He was a CO, but now he became a lieutenant. You know, so he went through the ranks in the last 17 years, 16 and a half years, right? So I say, LT. He's like, what's up, convict? I'm like, man, um, I need to holler at you. He was like, what's up? I said, man, I went to one of those meetings, one of those recovery meetings upstairs, and I like it. He said, that's good. I said, man, um, I can't go home like this. I said, I'm dirty as a motherfucker, LT. He said, so what you want me to do? I said, I can't check in. I can't check in. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't go to the hole. But I won't stay clean on the yard. I need to get clean first. Remember, I'm 210 pounds, you know, pit bull. You know, I'm buffing iron with the homies, telling motherfuckers what to do and shit like that. And and here I am, it's like something happened because when they said he's always been like that, that was my moment. So um, here comes the funny part. He said, so what you want me to do with you, convict? And I said, I can't check in. He said, so you want to disobey a direct order? And I said, yeah. He said, go, he said, go to your block. I'll be up there. And I want you to disobey a direct order. And give me a little, a little, a little feedback, you know, a little resistance. And we go get you clean. Because he was clean too. Mm. Um, after that hurt, I go up there to my cell, tell the cell that's like, man. I need to do something real quick. So he steps out. So I'm sitting there thinking, I'm like, well, let me take a couple of grams just in case. So I'm getting ready to, I'm getting ready to take a couple of grams with me. I'm about to put it in my prison wallet. <laughs> I'm about to, I'm about to, I'm about to put this, <laughs> I'm about to put it up in my prison wallet. You dig what I'm saying? Your, your viewers will know what that is. They ask questions. Just tell them what it is. So I'm about to put these couple of grams in my prison wallet, man. But I didn't get a chance to package it right, right? And here come the LT and his two COs. I'm like, I'm trying to like, fuck, 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 fuck. You know, so I close my photo app. I'm like, he's like, cuff up. I'm calm, Vic. I'm like, Hold on, hold on, LT. Hold on for a second. He's like, cuff up, convict. I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm trying to wink at him, right? Like, you know, like I'm not ready yet, you yeah. know? So the resist that we talked about, I'm resisting without re without knowing I'm resisting. You dig what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. He's like, cuff up. I'm like, wait a minute. Y'all go over there. So remember, I'm 210 pounds, so I can, I can tussle, you know, at the time, right? Yeah. So they told me to cuff up. I'm like, no. I'm like, cuff up. I pushed them. They're like, no, they cuff up. Man, I wrestled these motherfuckers because I'm not scared to go to shoe, Herc. Fuck shoe. I did three years in shoe. I'm not scared to go in the shoe. I'm scared what's going to happen when I go to shoe. I've been smoking heroin for a long time. Mm. I'm scared to go to shoe because I know I'm going to get sick. So here I am wrestling with these motherfuckers, man, because I need to get this shit with me when they put me in this shoe. Didn't happen like that. They pepper sprayed me. They did all that shit, dog. And they finally put me on my chest and put my arms behind my back. And my body 
I'm already I'm already a couple of days into it already because I know I'm gonna get sick. You, you feel what I'm saying? But I don't look like no dope thing. You know, I, I smoke that shit to get high, to forget about everything. You know, forget about this 20 years. You dig what I'm saying? And um, I'm walking the shoe. I'm like, LT, this is a mistake. And I'm trying to pull away from him. I'm trying my best to pull away from him. Like, this nigga done went crazy. The homie's like, ghost done went crazy. I'm in the shoe. I'm like, boom. Open this motherfucking door. Open the door. Call the LT. Open the door. I'm not scared of being in the hole. I just, I'm scared what's going to happen. He come up to the door later on and say, it's going to be okay. I understand. It's going to be okay. He opened that food slot. He gave me some Marlboro Red. The motherfuckers burned your throat. And he said, here goes some Hershey Kisses right here. Because I told him what I was doing. Next you know, I can't sleep. I can't. I'm wide awake. Because you know when shoot, they never turn that fucking light off. Oh, on. yeah. All the time. And I'm right there pacing. Trying to get some push-ups. It, it ain't gonna be that bad. It ain't gonna be that bad. It ain't gonna be that bad. I slept, and then all of a sudden, the back, the back start. My back start hurting. My ankles start hurting. I got the flu-like symptoms coming. My intestines is like twisting. Um, the headaches. My teeth hurt. I've been smoking heroin for 12 years in prison. Mm. Understand what I'm saying? The back pains. I can't sleep. I can't eat. It's like a fucking song, don't it? I can't sleep, baby. Yeah, yeah, that was me. Um, I didn't drop a deuce for like seven, eight days. Damn. I went to sleep. And I woke up. And um, I was okay. I dropped that deuce, took a shower. The LT kept bringing me Hershey Kisses because I needed chocolate. I needed sweets. You know, you know them little jelly packets they mm -hmm. give you, sucking on those. You know, you know the oranges, mm. sucking the oranges. You know, because I need, I needed that sweets. I, you know, this, this experience of detoxing off heroin was the most painful experience a human being could have and if I never spent that $25 when I was 14 13 years old I wouldn't have felt like this but here I am so um I got clean I stayed in the hole 33 days so when I got out he said how you feel he said continue to do this I'll be watching you so that's when I gave all the homies the knives, took the counsel, take all the females off my vision list. And um, I stopped going to the day room and uh, I <coughs> started reading books because the homies like, the homie ghost and finally went crazy. He finally went crazy. He took mm -hmm. all the females off his vision list. He turned in all the knives. He don't sit in the chow hall with us no more. He walk in the track by himself. Um, I use my reputation, my little, you know, little reputation that I, I did build as I'm getting ready to go home. And um, the day I went home was um, everybody was right there by R&D waiting for me. And I got out and um, life became different. I've been a copycat my whole life. I've copied the wrong cats. So ain't nothing wrong with being a copycat as long as I copy the right cat. Mm. And that's what I've been doing, copying the right cats. Damn. That's deep, man. Um, did you uh, get involved with heroin after you got locked up or before you got locked up? I was selling a little bit of it, you know. Um, I was slinging heroin, you know, okay. not to that major scale, but you know, what a, what an, an ounce of that shit can make you in prison is like you a kingpin. Yeah, yeah. You know, because you're selling it. What I would sell for ten dollars, what you would sell for ten dollars on the street, that's a hundred dollars, and I'll cut that in half. Mm. 
And see, I just wanted to put that in perspective because I know um, a lot of people don't realize that when you, you know, get into prison and trying to cope with the environment, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's, it's a hell of a thing, man. And, and there's a lot of things that play into that. And I'm glad to see you pulled out of that because one of my other mentors, I didn't know it, but he was shooting heroin and he actually overdosed in prison. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's, it, he had 30 something years and he was always, you know, helping me with legal work and stuff. But uh, it, it's, it's no joke, man. I mean, the mental, man. So to keep your keep your mentals on a on a functioning level and not let that break you is is it, it's just it's so powerful, man, because people think physical and it's your mental game, man. Yes, sir. <laughs> your mental game is, mm. dude. It's it's a whole nother level, and like you know, you have people come to visit you, which was a blessing. I didn't really, I didn't have that, but having somebody to relate to even on the street. So, mm. you know, once you got to that point, man, it's just like being able, like you said, to turn that next corner. So, getting out, did you have any big plans, or did did things just kind of fall into place, or man, how'd that play out? Man, you know, my my initial plan was. It's gonna, I'm gonna be smarter this time. I'm gonna do things a little different. I'm gonna keep my circle even smaller because I was gonna do the exact same thing I was gonna do again. Because remember, when I came back to America, they got laptops and lattes. The world's different now. They got cell phones, laptops, lattes, the new freeway, 105 freeway. You know, um, they got all this new stuff. They got a train in LA now. Um, women in yoga pants walking around there, <laughs> there <laughs> you know I'm like man um, I've only seen Starbucks on the news my first place I went to was a Starbucks um, I went and got one of them mocha latte whatever this <laughs> shit is I went and got one of those and um, I had no clue what I was going to do professionally um, I thought I was going to be back into the game because that's all I know mm. I started out at 13 and I was doing it on the street. I'm, I was pretty good at it, at it, you know. I was doing it in prison too. And so, what I'm gonna do? Nothing. I'm gonna go back to do this. But um, I started to be a copycat. I connected with these um, that 70 year young grandmother that came inside that prison. She connected me with some people that I could benefit from for guidance, mm -hmm. which I did. So um. My ego, my pride, dog, was, um, I had to crush that. You dig what I'm saying? So I went to, um, my friend got me a job as a sign twirler. And you got to understand, in the pen, I got a reputation. That's mm -hmm. why I'm in the pen. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? That's why I'm in the pen, you know. Uh, Pre-prison, pre you know, I'm, I'm ghost loke, you know, the, you know, the young hustler. But now, who am I without that? Who am I without that? I'm just DJ, all right? So here I am, what do I do? Got you a job, doing what? Twirling Verizon wireless signs. Don't you know who, you, don't you know who I think I am? Don't you know who I think I am? I can't twirl no damn Verizon wireless signs. Don't you know what kind of cars I used to drive? When? Before you went, oh yeah, 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 that shit don't exist no more. You know how much money I made when, before prison? Like, yeah, you don't have it no more. You got five years paper. You ain't got no job. I got a job for you twirling Verizon wireless signs for $8 an hour. So what he gave me was this little thing called the MP3 player. <laughs> because people didn't have cassette players, no, you know, cassette tape yeah, didn't exist yeah, no more. Yeah. You know, so it gave me a little, a little bitty thing about this big that held like 2,000 songs on it, right? And some little ear things to put in your ear. But then he's like, here, to save you, he said, take these black glasses and put these black glasses on. <laughs> so I'm on the corner, homie. I'm uh, twirling Verizon Wireless uh, signs. And I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm mad at it at first because, you know, it's like from selling cocaine to twirl them Verizon wireless signs, and, I, and I'm damn near 40 years old. You dig what I'm saying? And I got pretty good at it. And I'm like, you know, roll the cross. <laughs> and I take that motherfucker and I throw it on the back. 
and point uh, to the store. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, remember back in the day, uh, I, used like, to, I used to pop lock. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I'm like, he's uh, got that. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Throwing the sign and shit, man. Oh, shit. People, you know, people too. Uh-huh. And then the same phone number they gave me is yeah. the same phone number I have to this day. Yeah. And then, um, huh. and then I, um, I'm at this one place, man. And um, I used to have long hair, you know, with long, thick gold teeth. Yeah. And um, this couple come up to me and say, um, "We like your look." I'm like, "We work on this TV show." You think you could play a convict? I just start laughing. <laughs> I'm like, I think so. So, well, here goes our card. We like your look. We like you to be on our show. We do casting. I'm on paper. I'm making eight dollars an hour. <clears throat> I go there, hurt. I send you some pictures of that shit too. I'm like looking around, like it was a motorcycle show, right? So it's like the prison scene and people are politicking and they're like, what the fuck? Who's con- who's real, who is not real? The deputies are all fake, <laughs> you know? They're doing some prison scenes and, and they're like, that's him. That's the one that just got out from doing 17. Hey, is this real? Yeah, I guess, I guess. How would this be done? Like this, so they, Move me right here, put me right there, and ask me a bunch of questions. People writing shit down. I didn't know. Just ask me questions. I never. My first time. I took the day off the tour of Verizon Wireless Line <laughs> to to you know to come check this out, right? And um, I did that, and um, they said, "Well, you're gonna do it." I said, "I'm not an actor." They said, "Act like you're in prison." I'm a part of SAG after union now. I'm, I'm with the <laughs> yeah. union now, you know. Yeah. So um, they blessed me um, with that right there. But I still twirl Verizon wireless signs, right? And um, I did that, and then I got a chance to work with LL Cool J on um, here in Venice, you know, um, on, on one of his shows. Um, I got a chance to um, work with Selena Gomez. I don't even know who she, who she was. Just you got this little white girl on this Disney show. That who's singing? I said, you know, you got a good voice. <laughs> so you think so? I'm like, yeah. So I'm like, you got a good voice. I think you should be a singer. She said, thank you. So what's your name? I said, DJ Verrett. I said, what's your name? She said, Selena Gomez. I said, it's nice to meet you, Selena Gomez. And like, um, ready for take. And then here she comes out. I'm like, oh, that's that little, that's a little kid. That's a little kid. Oh, she's the primary. This is her show. It was called Wizards of Waverly. You know. Mm. So and then the funny thing about it was my nieces watch the show so that's my uncle that's my uncle mama they go uncles on tv right now <laughs> you know it's and, and then you know the homies in the pen seeing me on sons of anarchy you know seeing me with doing all these different sh- all this different stuff but here comes the killer part i meet a cat named christopher kennedy lawford jfk's nephew peter lawford son from the rat pack we were like became like that he was the one that turned me on to all this new life and said there's nobody out here really like you organic you look at the world with a whole new way of life he said motherfuckers is walking around the prison of their own making dj he said but you got the keys to the keys to freedom let me introduce you to a new way of life copy me and I, when he said that, that's my word. Be a copycat, but copy the right cat. Mm-hmm. So here comes the part that's going to blow your wig back if you had a wig, homie. <laughs> um, Christmas Eve of 2008. I now have a PR representative. Her name is Monique. What's up, Monique? And um, I'm invited to the Hollywood Christmas Parade. Me and my friend, her name is Lorna Scott, she's an actress too. And we're on a Hollywood float on Christmas Eve on Hollywood Boulevard. I got pay- I'm on pro- I'm on I'm on supervised release. I got the curfew at 10 p.m. Mm. I got this little cheap ass flip phone. You gotta pull the antenna out. It's like 846. 
we got to we got to make these rounds because I got to be at home when they call, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. In a white Cadillac on Hollywood Boulevard, which is all red carpet, I'm on that float like this, waving at everybody, <laughs> waving at everybody, yeah. uh, and we're driving through, and they're like, DJ, I'm like, what's up, y'all? Uh -huh. What's up? We stop in front of the Grand Marshal, dog. Now understand this: if I never took that twenty-five dollars and flipped it, went to the pen. Would I be here now on Hollywood Boulevard at the Christmas parade on a float? No. So the, I'll stop in front of the Grand Marshal. Grand Marshal say, so DJ Verrett, you know, what do you got going on? I said, I'm, I'm, in the, I'm in the beginning of writing a book. What's the book about? It's about my life. What's the title? An inside job from life in the maze to an amazing life. And I'm dropping a CD called Make It, Drunk, Make it Jump. What do you want to say to everybody? And I said, Merry Christmas and have a safe new year. Thank you, DJ. I said, thank you. Walk through. I'm getting ready to, I'm getting ready to jump in my, I had a little Thunderbird at the time, a 93 Thunderbird. The passenger window didn't roll up. You know, I didn't spend no money yet, right? Um, my PO called and said, hey, I'm um, like, yeah, is this him? I'm like, hey, what's going on? He said, where are you? I said, I'm, I'm headed home right now. I'll, I'll make my curfew. He said, you know what? Was that you on the float right now? I said, yeah. Yeah, I was. He said, what are you doing on Hollywood Christmas Parade? <laughs> and I said, and I said, just this is my other part of my life now. This is what I do. He said, you're on the Christmas Parade. I just saw my family. I'm like, yeah, but I'll make them home for my curfew. He said, don't worry. You're good. I call, I told my agent, he said, we got to go right now? I'm like, no, that was him. He said, I could stay. <laughs> so I'm right there smoking cigarettes with David Carradine. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm yeah. right there with Michael Collier, Samuel L. Jackson. I'm, with, I'm right there with all these people. Chris is like watching me like the big homies used to do when we curb serving. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. we in the Hollywood Christmas, I got this white cat, you dig what I'm saying? who from the streets, even though he's a Kennedy, but he ain't cut like the rest of them. You dig what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And and he he introduced me to his whole family. Chris is so approachable. Yeah, Chris Lawford, I, I miss him. He is so approachable. He just passed two two years ago. He had a heart mm -hmm. attack. But um, he introduced me to a new way of life. He's sitting there watching me, and people are just surrounded by me. I'm in a circle, and they ask me questions. So how was it in prison? I said, it was fucking horrible. <laughs> yeah, you know, man. you know, and, well, I have a son, uh, I have a daughter, I got a friend, I got a nephew, I got a cousin, what do I do, DJ? And everything that I've done has become an asset, right? So I'm in from my PO, I'm in a suit. He said, why are you wearing a suit? I said, because Antonio Viragosa is getting ready to give me an award for my volunteer work with these at-risk youth. He said, you've kept a job. We got you documented as a sign twirler. Now you're doing, now you're on Hollywood Christmas floats. My prison file and the person that he saw in front of him didn't match. And he said, um, Mr. Verrett, um, get you a lawyer. I want to go back to court and I want to terminate the remaining of your supervised release. I had four years left. Mm. Remember, three weeks later, I'm at 312 North Spring Street, which is the United States District Court of the United States Central District of California, mm -hmm. the federal courthouse. Mm -hmm. Christina A. Snyder, because the judge that sentenced me had died. So she took over his case. I got the prosecutor and said, um, is this true? And my PO was like, Your Honor, I saw him on the Christmas parade. He said, he's a waste of my time. I don't have to chase him. He said, his prison file and the person you see in front of him is, is not the same person. Mm -hmm. Something happened. And I'm re recommending that Mr. Verrett can manage his own life today, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. And he says, is this true? I said, yes, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. The prosecutor said, I have no objections. 
boom, it's hereby ordered. Four years early, I've been on supervisor release since I was a child. I've been on probation since I was a child. Now here I was, a 36, 38-year-old 30, man. I'm free. Herc, I got a passport. And Chris said, where do you want to go? I said, anywhere. A friend of mine was working for the University of Ankara, Ankara, Turkey. And said, you want to go to Turkey with me? You want to do some of your songs? Kurt, I'm a Herc. I had four unmastered songs. You thought I was Tupac when I was in Turkey. <laughs> I'm, sitting there, I'm sitting there spitting live lyrics over these unmastered four tracks at the University of Ankara in Turkey. And they, you thought I was too, you thought I sold 20 million albums. And it's like, from life in a maze to an amazing life. And that's what happened after I got out. Mm. Shit ain't, shit don't add up. Statistically, I'm not supposed to be a success. <clears throat> yeah. Oh yeah, and then I did go back to high school at 38 years old. I completed high school at 38 years old. I'm right there getting ready to graduate with these 18 year olds. They thought I was a parent. I was like, no, I'm a student. I'm getting ready to cross this stage. And I crossed that motherfucker at 38 with a 3.38. Mm. And I went to college after that. Damn, DJ, man, that's a hell of a story, brother. Herc, I've, I've been to Turkey, dog. I've, I've been to Jesus' mama's house in Turkey. Well, I've been to Germany. Been to Paris, I've been to um, Greece, been to Australia, um, been everywhere. I don't want to travel in United. I want to travel in yeah, Europe. Travel I want to go see where it's old at. Yeah. My next trip is the is the Great Wall of China. I want to go see that right there. I want to walk the Great Wall of China. But this what it's like for me when my perception change when I abandoned it when I abandoned the life my thinking created and I can live the life my soul intends me to live see right now big homie I'm supposed to live the quality of life that I live now mm -hmm. you understand what I'm saying I'm supposed to live like this the other shit that was me doing all that I don't control the narrative no more I use that shit as a point of reference and as an asset you see what I'm saying as mm -hmm. an asset to say you can walk this. You can walk this walk, but this was gonna happen. I just thank God that I was strong enough, strong enough, to persevere the the places I've been, and also my ex lifer homies that's still doing life. I communicate with them all the time. They call me. They call me. I'm gonna send some money to you, homie. No, I don't want no money. Send me some pictures, dog. And take my and, and continue to take my phone calls. I said, "You got that, but I'm gonna send you some bread anyway. You know, go get you some soups and shit. You yeah. know, yeah. That's what my life is like now. I got, oh yeah, I'm a dad too now. I got seven year old twin girls. Oh wow, that's a beautiful thing, man. I mean, when you hear stories like that and how they come full circle." you had a greater purpose, man. You know, you, you were able to um, see some things and, and the universe just, it puts you in a place to where you can be an example to others. Because if you didn't tell your story, how would people know it exist? Mm. And that's what this is all about, man, mm. is bringing your story into reality so that people can actually have a point of reference man and dude that that's you can't put that in it, there's not enough words I can say to break that down and the impact it's going to have on our viewers here mm -hmm. um, if there's anything you'd want to share with the viewers as far as um, in retrospect maybe <clears throat> if you were you know talking to a young DJ out there or you know somebody in particular that is trying to struggle with you know finding direction in life what would you say to them I'll tell them that um, if I was talking to my, a young DJ, I'll tell them that you, you've always been enough. You've always been loved because a lot of us look for love. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. we, all, we all look for acceptance. 
companionship and understanding. I would tell young DJ or anybody that's listening, I understand. I understand how you feel, what you've been through. From there, we're going to develop a companionship, a friendship, you know, and I accept it. Accept it. You know, that's what I would tell them. That's what I would tell myself or anybody that's listening. That the universe, it may sound crazy because that's the, that's the, that's the frequency I'm on. You mm -hmm. dig what I'm saying? It's waiting for you. If you can see your worth, if any of your viewers can see their own worth, then the universe will see your value. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It took me a long journey to get to right there, to know my worth so people can see the value in it. And how do people find you on the internet if they're looking to try to reach out to you? I mean, we're gonna have the links in the description, but. Yeah, they can, um, they can hit me up at, um, on Instagram at Mr. Underscore Ghost Loke, you know, underscore Ghost Loke. Okay. You know, they can hit that part right there. And um, um, I'm setting up the link tree page. I'm getting all that stuff going. But um, my YouTube page is, um, is Mr. Ghost Loke. You can hit me up right there. And um, yeah, um, the book, my audio book has just been released. Mm -hmm. It's seven hours of an in-depth journey of decisions and choices, not the glorification of it because I want to educate, empower, and influence. And um, so they got to get that, man. Um, they will the love, yeah, they will love that right there. And, um, and I want to say thank you, you know, because for having this platform, I really do, I appreciate you. I'm glad you exist. I'm glad you, you, got, you got your show. I've been a fan of it before I even met you. Um, but the old way of life, dog, I was fresh out of ideas, <laughs> you know? So um, that's it right there, man. And, um, thank you guys and, you know, thank Big Hurt for having this right here and um, educational influence, man. And um, he gonna make me start buffing iron again too, <laughs> goddammit. <laughs> so that's it, so. Hey, there you guys have it. Big Herc 916, DJ Barrett, fresh out.